chance to uh, hear your word. We thank you, Lord, because we know it's food for our souls. So would you feed us today? Lord, would you get us stronger where we need to be uh, in, in, in this time of our lives? We thank you for the nourishment we're about to receive. Let it nourish us, Lord. We thank you and give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, we're continuing, you all. We're back with uh, more of our series entitled Put Here for God's Soul Purpose. And we've been learning about the truth for a few Sundays now concerning this, right? Mm -hmm. And how proper it is, how righteous it is to know that each and every personal thing has some relevant association in connection with God's divine purpose, each person and each created thing. Now, of course, we as human beings in the natural sense, and you all know this by now, we don't always see it that way. Huh? Nor do many people want to see it that way. Am I right? Amen. We really have a problem with that. That's, mm -hmm. that's part of it. That's our sin nature. And when you have a sin nature, you have a problem with doing things uh, in a way that's uh, not comfortable to you. See, a lot of the things that we do, we get in trouble because we like to be comfortable in our own skin. Mm -hmm. And how many of you know that God's not put here to, to let you be comfortable? In fact, God's going to take you out of your comfort zone <laughs> mm -hmm, to get you to where you need to be. Yeah. But we like being comfortable, so we like to have our own purpose and our own plans for our lives. Am I right? We're just speaking truth right now. Okay, that's what we do. Those of you who were raised in the 60s and 70s, as I was, you remember an old secular song. It was secular, but it had a meaning. You remember them old Isley Brothers? What was the name of that song? It's Your Thing. Remember that song? Don't start dancing. I'm not going to sing it. But it's your thing. And the other part of it was do what you want to do. do, do, right? Mm -hmm. It went on to say, I can't tell you who to sock it to. Now, now, without speculating on what the words meant, let's leave that out. Okay? I think it's fair to say that this is how most people think and behave in these days and times. You see? Mm -hmm. People think it's my thing. It's my life, okay? I behave in the way I want to behave. Mm -hmm. I go where I want to go. I do what I want to do. People say, it's my life. It's my time. It's my time. Now, you hear people say that all the time, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what we do. People say, I can, live like, like, I can live life like I want to. I can do whatever I want to do. I can go wherever I want to go. Mm -hmm. Nobody can tell me what to do. I'm grown. Hmm? I work for this. I work for this house. I, I paid these bills. I can do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Isn't that how it is? Mm -hmm. People have that mindset, don't they? Uh, uh, we know. I'm going to say we do because we're all folks. But people may not use that old saying, it's your thing, because that song is, a, is decades old, right? It's been gone a long time. So they don't usually use that, that term. Today they use phrases like, I'm living my best life now. That's the new it's your thing mm -hmm. phrase. Uh, uh, they, they use terms like, it's my truth. That means I can do what I want to do. <laughs> see? You, you see how we flip it? But it means the same thing, wink, wink. Uh, it, it, it means the same thing. People resign to do what they want to do, doing as they please, even when they know it's wrong, people want to do what they want to do. Mm -hmm. You can look at the government. You can look at a lot of things across the world. Is it right to bomb another country because you want to take it over just because you want to? Is it right to lie and say they, they bombed me or they're coming after me when you know they're not? This is the plight of man. This is what we do. It's my thing. I'll do what I want to do because I desire to do it. That's not good. That's the wrong way to go. That's the wrong mindset. I've mentioned this before. We don't even have to go to, to see what they're doing in Russia and different places in Afghanistan. We don't have to go that far. Just go outside and watch people on the freeway. Watch how they drive on the freeway. Watch how they play cat and mouse at the risk of innocent older people driving alongside them. 
how they cut in front of you. If you slow down, they'll nip the back of your end of your car, which will put you into a spin to hit somebody else. We, we, we were involved in something like that. I saw it happen. That's what got us into the big melee on the freeway because that's exactly what this truck did. Didn't care, just slamming into people. Because, I, because he thought he could do what he wanted to do. People weaving in and out of traffic. People commit hit and runs and don't even stop. Dead bodies. Especially down in Silicon Valley. There's something going on in San Mateo in that area, that county. They're just running over people and keep going. Conducting sideshows. Although they know it's against the law. It's what they want to do. You see what I mean? So we can look at this thing and, say, and, and see that this is the mindset and certainly not the mind of God. So who do you think is influencing people's minds when they do those things? There's a demon at the root of it, you all. Satan. Mm -hmm. Satan through possession or oppression. Mm. Okay? Let me add that. Because he possesses those who aren't saved, but those who are saved can be oppressed. Okay? He can affect them too. And watch out church, because not only is sometimes this a mindset of unsaved people, but many people in the church now are sort of doing what they want to do in some cases as well when it comes to these things. The phrase you hear in the church is, it's not, it's my thing, I do what I want to do. You may hear it, uh, uh, it's my uh, I'm living my best life. Some people that claim to be Christian use that term, my best life now. <laughs> but the one you really hear is don't judge me. <laughs> we hear that one. <laughs> we hear that one in the church. And, and truth be told, many people, including church people, are quick to say, don't judge me. You can't judge me. Okay? Especially when what they're doing is something that they really want to do. Okay, and people will result to taking scripture out of context and twisting the scripture. I called it uh, word wrangling. Uh, you know, you don't have to go to a, to a rodeo to see a word wrangler. Sometimes you just come to church and, and let people wrangle that thing or listen to some of the messages that putting out that's being put out in a compromised church, and you'll see, you'll hear some word wrangling try to make it seem what they're doing is okay, okay? When obviously it's not. People leave churches, people go church hopping, pastor shopping, etc., because they don't like the messages that the pastor may be preaching. And especially if they think he or she is preaching to them or about them. That's a problem. And by the way, saints, if you feel that way, you're probably right. Okay, I'll say that. Uh, and I'll tell you what I mean. Not right because the pastor is talking about you in particular, but he's talking about everybody. And understand that it's not the pastor talking, it's God talking through the pastor. See, that's what we have to understand. Don't feel alone. Just know that you're, you're likely not the only one feeling that way. Because, as I said, it's not the pastor who's talking to you, but God through the pastor. And guess what else? The Lord may be speaking to the pastor as well, okay? So that he can get him or get them and others together in addition to you. You see what I mean? You ever thought of that? You get what I'm saying? See, God is no respecter of persons. He prepares a meal so everybody can get fed. That's what I'm trying to say, okay? Not just one person, amen? Amen. Or, or, or to use another example, God has an antibiotic. Let's put it like this. He has an antibiotic for every spiritual form of bacteria that's plaguing us. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. He knows, okay? He administers it through his word. It's up to us to receive the medicine. Amen. Okay? And let's face it, all of us have something. And sometimes he's speaking to all of us at the same time. Mm. You see what I mean? But only God knows our hearts. We don't know it. So he knows who this is supposed to get to. So that all can eventually be healed. As the scripture says, that he has begun a good work in you. You can be confident that he'll complete it till the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. So he's working on everybody. So don't, don't forget, that's the crux of this sermon. 
is that we're put here for God's sole purpose. He's going to get us to where he wants us to be, and we need to adjust our thinking and our behavior with regard to that. Amen? Amen. Okay. So now, uh, if not, if we don't, then that's when the road becomes rocky. You think the road is rocky now. It can become rockier than it, than it may already be. Amen? Let's go to our Bible. I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Let's go to our Bible and take a look at some examples of what it means to do God's will and the importance of doing so. I'm going to ask Pastor Aunt Lisa to take us, please, to the story of Jonah, chapter 1. And Pastor, if you would just read just uh, the first three verses, first uh, verse 1 to 3a. That's all I need. And just read that for us, please. Okay. So it says in um, uh, Jonah chapter 1, 1 to 3a, it says this. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great, ci that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. All right, okay. I think we, thank you, Pastor. You all may know this story. It's a pretty interesting story. Uh, but that's all we need right now for the sake of time. So here we see a man named Jonah, okay? And Jonah was obviously called by the Lord, would you say? Mm -hmm. Would you say that Jonah was called by the Lord? Yes, yes, he was indeed. He was called, and he was called for a general purpose or a specific purpose? A specific purpose, amen? God didn't just say go and hang out or go take a trip. Here, I'm paying your fare. He said, no, go out and cry out against these people because their wickedness has come before me. So he told Jonah to go for a specific purpose, to do a specific job, okay? And God had some things planned for the people of Nineveh, didn't he? Mm -hmm. God had some, some things planned, and he intended to use old Jonah, brother Jonah, <laughs> for those plans, Amen. But we see that Jonah what? Jonah wasn't willing to adhere to God's plans, was he? Mm -mm. That's, and why do you think that was? Well, I like them. it was because Jonah had his own plans. Mm -hmm. Jonah had his own ideas. Jonah had an aversion to the people of Nineveh, didn't he? Yes. Okay. Jonah didn't like them folks. Do we see that nowadays? Mm -hmm. People don't like those people. They don't like those folks, okay? Well, Jonah didn't want to deal with Nineveh. And I'm not saying Nineveh was, Nineveh sound like they were a bunch of babies kids. But the point is, it, it doesn't matter when the Lord has something for you to do. See, God's plan goes further than ours, don't mm -hmm. they? See? And Jonah didn't want to do it. And Jonah said, nobody's going to tell me what to do. He didn't say that, but that was the mindset. Because he, 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 he fled even the presence of the Lord. He didn't want to be around God at that time. Some of us do that. We don't want to be around the Lord. We don't even want to hear the word. We, people escape and try to get away. They go places. They shut themselves in. They shut themselves down. They go in isolation. Really, they're trying to get away from, they say they're getting away from a certain thing, but we're really trying to get away from the word of the Lord because we know the word of the Lord is truth. You see what I mean? If we get away from truth, then we're really running away from he who is truth. Hmm. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So if we're running away from the word, we may as well be doing what Jonah is doing. Mm -hmm. And that's really, that should remind us of that old Isley Brother tune. Can you hear it? Boom, 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 boom. It's your thing. Here we go. We're back to it's our thing. That's what Jonah was saying. I do what I want to do. Okay? Nobody can tell you who to help but you. He didn't want to help him. He said, you can't tell me who to help. I want to help whom I want to help, and I don't want to help those Ninevites, so I'm not going to do it. And that's why we've been served this sermon. We may not know there's a little Jonah in us. We may not know when that Jonah spirit is going to rise somewhere, because <laughs> there are some people today, okay, who have a JM, a Jonah mentality, when it comes to moving according to God's will. Some people won't do it. When it comes to moving uh, according to God's will instead of uh, their own will, or God's will versus their will. See, it's a contest. 
there's a conflict. You know, the flesh warring against the spirit. You know that, that scripture in Galatians 5, 16, the flesh warring against the spirit in that, in that section and talks about that. Okay. Uh, moving according to their own will and desire. We know that's right because there are people who won't even go to assist their own relatives, let alone a Ninevite. <laughs> we got people that you all know I'm right because you've got some relatives who you refuse to go see. It's like pulling teeth because of whatever reason or whatever past historical issues may be going on in the family. Whatever may have occurred, those issues may still be smoldering. Okay? I mean, the fire may be out, but the, in the years gone by, but somebody's heart is likely to still be hardened to the point where they just refuse to deal with their own kin. Have you seen that before? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've all seen it. We may not even realize it ourselves, but guess who does realize it? The Lord. The Lord. God knows. And, and the Lord knows because he designed you for his purpose. He designed each and every one of us for his purpose and his plan. Not the plans of man or the plans of unclean spirits or bogus ancestral spirits, but the Holy Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's what we need to know. Okay. You see, God doesn't want your heart hardened toward others. Uh, that's not his uh, plan. Have you ever thought to yourself, hmm, I wonder what God thinks about this. Or I wonder if the Lord approves of the way I'm feeling toward this person or the way I'm feeling toward my neighbors or the way I'm feeling toward those people who are down there playing that music so loud that I just feel like I'm plugging it. I wonder how God feels. I wonder if he has a plan in all this for me. Mm. See, it's easy for me in my comfort zone to be uncomfortable when I see something or I feel something or I hear something that I don't like. But like I said before, God's not worried about your comfort zone. He's got his own plans for your life. Amen. That's what we have to understand. Amen. Amen. Yeah, and, and, and that's what it was about Jonah. You think God didn't know that Jonah didn't want to go down there and he was going to hide under a leaf and all that other stuff? I had a little dog that went and hid under a leaf one day because he acted up and the other dog bit him. He said, Rah! and he ran. And I had to look under this big old leaf. I may as well, I should have named him Jonah. I forgot his name, Freddie. Should have named Freddie Jonah because that's what he did. He hid under a leaf. Fact is, we're people, unless we're people who know God, people who know Jesus, chances are we're not going to recognize our shortcomings because it's your thing. You do what you want to do, right? It's your thing. We've been doing our thing for so long. That's why. That was Jonah, you all. The sad part is that Jonah knew who God was. Did he know God? Mm -hmm. Was Jonah a prophet? Mm -hmm. Jonah was a prophet, amen? Jonah was a man who was a prophet, okay, an uncooperative prophet, a reluctant prophet, <laughs> well, not, let me add that. <laughs> but he was a prophet just the same. And that's another teaching point while we're on this. Can God use people that are reluctant? Does all the time, amen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's another teaching point. God can use just about anybody, can he? I'm going to say just about. I'm going to say he can use anybody, okay? Anybody. God can use hard-headed, stubborn folks. With a clay. He can use those who are agreeable. Matter of fact, he's going to use you whether you like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> okay? God, I, I said stubborn, stubborn folks. Those are... Because we're all tools. Remember I said that before. I said that at the, at the uh, I think we're in Bible Grace study. TV. Grace TV India. I told the people in, in, in India, they, they're getting some of this too. Okay. That we're all toolbox. That we're all tools from his uh, uh, vast spiritual toolbox. That's what I'm trying to say. The point is, however, that we as people must be. Uh, we must be willing to relinquish or let go of our own fleshly or carnal desires and submit to God so that he can use us as tools. Okay? 
that he can use us at, uh, for his purpose and his plan. And, and that's what happened to Jonah. Those of you who know the whole story know that Jonah had, Jonah wound up doing what? Doing some deep sea diving. Right. I mean, he didn't go down to see coral reefs or anything, but he he had he was dunked. He was dunked like a donut. Right. He was dunked into the water and he wound up in the belly of a fish, didn't he? OK. Yeah. Yeah. You could say that's what happened. But God had to do that so he could get right. Let's just say that God delivered Jonah to a large fish in order to get Jonah delivered. <laughs> did he? That's what he did. He was God's man. He was God's boy, but he still had something that needed to be delivered in him from him. Right. Mm -hmm. Some of us are like that. God wants to use you and he may use you, but he knows he's still while he's using you. He's going to get you delivered. He's going to deliver some things up out of you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Don't think you're there yet. OK. None of us can say we're there yet. He's yeah, using yeah. us for certain things. Oh, but you might be doing some deep sea diving or some skydiving, which you never know, to get you delivered. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's what he did with Jonah. Let me give you another example. Listen to what's written in uh, the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Let's go there, Pastor. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 29. And just read verses 11 to 14. This is very, very interesting. You all have read this before, but again, the Lord gives it to me in a way that I have to look at it again. Jeremiah chapter uh, 29, verses 11 to 14 mm -hmm. says this, the word of God. Um, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, mm -hmm. thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Mm -hmm. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you mm -hmm. and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Mm -hmm. I will be found by you says the Lord and I will bring you back from your captivity. Yeah. I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you says the Lord and I will bring you to the place from which I caused you to be carried away captive. <laughs> Woo! Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Praise God. I'm telling you, that's a word. Is that not a word? Mm. We just like to read 11. Well, I know the thoughts I think toward you. Thoughts peace, are good and peace not and evil. not evil, comfortable, oh. cozy, to give you a future. Oh, what's, what, what's your hope? What's your future? What do you want for your future? Huh? We <laughs> like that because it makes God sound like a genie, don't it? We want a genie God. <laughs> What's your command? Prosper. It doesn't work like that. What do you want? We got to read through this thing, right? Most of you know that. This tells us that God already knows what we need and what he intends for us. The Lord says he alone knows the plans that he has for his people. That part is right. And he's talking about Israel. And we'll talk about Israel some other time, but you know we're part of Israel, right? We are now grafted in. The same goes for us, okay? He knows. Now, look, watch this. I, uh, uh, because I know some people are, are looking at this saying, well, he said he knows this and he knows and he give us a future and a hope. But, but, but I want you to look at the part uh, down in, in 13 and 14. Is that where I am? Yeah. And you'll seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. He says, I'll, in 14, he says, I'll be found by you, says the Lord. And I'll bring you back from your captivity. Their captivity. Okay. God's willing to bring them back from their captivity. God's willing to bring us back from our captivity. Do you see that? Do you understand where, where we're going? Because there's even uh, more that we need to see in this passage. In the last sentence, it says, The Lord says he'll bring his people back, not just from their captivity, but from the places where he caused them to be carried captive. He caused, he caused he's allowed some folks to be captive. Okay? We need to understand what's going on here. You know, Israel wandered for a long time aimlessly, didn't 40 they? Years. Forty years. Forty-some years. It should have taken them less than a month. Forty-something years they wandered around, okay? Due to their own, it's my thing, 
I do what I want to do. It until they, because they kept on singing that Isley Brother tune. They, I, 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 I mean, mentally, the Isley Brothers weren't around then, Girl. but they, but they were singing that tune, that idea in their heads that they wanted things that way. The Lord said they were a stiff neck and rebellious people. God already knew. Due to their own, doing things their own way, they were led into captivity. Had to be. Remember what I said about comfort? God's not concerned about that comfort. He wants to get us right. They had to be delivered from some stuff. Okay? And um, he said that he allows them to be carried away. He calls them to be carried away captive. And how so if the people were intent to be stubborn and rebellious, my friends, whether people want to accept it or not, God knows all things because he's all sovereign. He is a sovereign God. God was not caught off guard, was he? The Israelites were. See, we're the only ones that get caught off guard by our uh, rebellious actions. Because, see, we act like we didn't know what we, we, when it happens. We say, well, why is this happening to me? And then if you just sit down and go back, get yourself something to drink and put your feet up and just think about it. Think about what's been going on in your life. Sometime, not all the time, but we can surely see from this passage that God knows he's sovereign of, of, over all things. He knows the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end. Amen. And that's what he's talking about here. Now, hold that thought for a second from Jeremiah 29, and let's see what the Word says in Revelation 1.18. Pastor, go there. We're going to come back to Jeremiah, but go to Revelation 1.18 for a minute, please. Revelation 1.18 mm -hmm. tells us this. What does it say? What did Jesus say in there? Jesus said in Revelation 1.18, he says this, I am he who lives and was dead, mm -hmm. and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. See, this is the same God. This is the only reason I went here. I want you to know this is the same God, the Lord. This is Jesus says he has the keys to the keys that unlock and lock death and Hades itself. Okay? So he knows who is bound for hell as well as captivity prior to leaving this earth. He knows where you're headed. He, he knows what you don't know. He knows what we don't know. He knows what the government can't tell you. He knows what the doctors don't know. Okay? <laughs> he knows what uh, the, the counselors, the lawyers don't know because he's the wonderful counselor. Amen? Yes. He knows it all. Okay? He knows the sicknesses that are going to come before us. He knows more about global warming because he designed the whole globe. He knows exactly what we need to do. He knows what's flying around, what they call UFOs. He already knows what's going on. You see? That's what it's talking about. He says, I have the keys of Hades and of death. I think that covers it all. You see what I mean? So he knows. And, and uh, he knows, so if he knows all of that, as well as about captivity, he knows who's going to be held captive and why before leaving this earth. He knew for the Israelites and he knows for us. Amen. He knows about us as well. Pastor, take us also to Proverbs 15.10 and see what it says, please. Proverbs 15.10 says this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Proverbs 15, 10 tells us, harsh discipline is for him who forsakes the way, for him who forsakes the way, mm -hmm. and he who hates correction will die. All right, thank you, Pastor. Harsh discipline is for him who forsakes the way, and he who hates correction will die. In other words, this is, a, this, uh, uh, this is all pretty self-explanatory if you look at it, don't you think? It's saying that God is omniscient, he's omnipotent, he knows all, he sees all, he has all power, yet he gives all people the opportunity to be used for his purpose. Amen. Okay? He's got discipline, he has to discipline us if we don't get it right. And the discipline, yes, it can be harsh, the same way you discipline your children, hopefully. Sometimes it takes some harsh discipline because you want the best for them, don't you? Yes. 
And if you don't discipline them right, they'll be out there doing anything in there. They'll turn against you if you don't raise those children right. Yep. Okay? One day they're going to be bigger than you. Okay? Taller than you. Both of my children are taller than me. Okay? Thank God that they still think I'm a little bit off the wall. He left a little of that fear in them. Okay? They don't really believe <laughs> that I'm like Annalisa. They, they don't see that part. Praise God, I'll go with that, whatever helps. But I'm saying, I'm saying that God knows us better than we know ourselves. And he says he, he has to discipline his children. Harsh discipline is for him who forsakes the way. And if they continue that way, it can lead to death and being excluded from God. And that's not a good thing. God has all power, okay? And so he's not going to sit back and, and let that happen to his children. And you see, uh, uh, he gives us that opportunity to be used for his purpose. Now, let's go back to our brother, cousin uh, uh, Jonah. We, he was delivered into captivity, Jonah was, okay? Same as Israel was in Babylon. You see what I mean? Captivity. Being in captivity is being in captivity, okay? It's just a, to a different degree, a different time, a different circumstance, okay? And that should cause all of us today to examine more closely, evaluate our own conduct. Are we in captivity? Has God had to put you in captivity? Is there something that you're locked in? Hmm? If you don't know the Lord, you, we already know you're in captivity, okay? You're... you're Whoever's pulling your strings, that's the one that you're in servitude to. If you don't know the word of God, then you know the world and the devil, and that's who's fueling you right now. No matter how good you try to be, you're still in captivity. Okay? But even those of, the, of us that are in the Lord, that have been set free, okay? Free to come to Christ. We still have things that we may be, uh, may need to be delivered from. Okay? Because it could be that many people here in this message today are going through all sorts of trials, may still be stuck in some situation, being held captive mentally, physically. Some people are being held captive financially. Oh, man, they can't do anything without uh, thinking about money. Uh, some people emotionally. Some people have sexual uh, uh, problems, addictions. Some people have... Uh, 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 drug addictions. They're in the church. They're there. Okay. All this, all of this, et cetera, et cetera, because they've committed to that mindset. Still want to do things on their own. Still want to do things their way. Okay. God knows the wheat from the tares. We don't. We've got a real, real, real good idea. But what if God is holding something at a certain time to get someone else where they need to be? Well, he's waiting on you to get to where you need to be. And you're still being held captive because you're still doing things your way. Huh? It's your thing. Do what you want to do. Listen, friends, it's time you realize that this is that was just a song, okay? I only used it to jog the to get the wheels turning. To, to paint a picture. We can't afford to adopt that song as a mindset. That's what I'm saying. We can't afford to say it's my thing. I'll do what I want to do. It's my life. I'm going to live it my way. It's my truth. I'm living my best life now. I'm not waiting on God. I ain't know if he's there. I'm going to do what I need to do. And that's just the way it is. We can't afford to do that. Especially when we know the Lord. Amen. Don't think you can live and do as you please and God is just going to sit back and watch you ruin your life and possibly die and go to hell. You think he's just going to sit there and watch you do that? Mm -mm. Not the God we serve. Mm -hmm. Not if he's got a purpose and a plan for your life. Amen. Uh -huh. Not the one and only true God. Believe me, he's got big plans for your lives. Amen. Amen. So as we prepare to close for today, listen to this passage in Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah 
chapter 46. And let's go to verses uh, 9 and 10. I'm going to ask Pastor to read that for us, please, and then we'll close for today. Isaiah 46, 9 and 10 says this, Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is no other. Mm. I am God and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things that are not yet done. Saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Amen, amen. That's a heavy, 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 heavy verse right there. Both of those verses. Thank you again, Amen. Pastor. Thank you. So, uh, all right. As if we as if we don't already have enough facts and confirmation concerning the sovereignty of the Lord our God. This passage in Isaiah simply adds to it even more, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, it's absolutely amazing if you read it. It's telling us uh, that it's the Lord who, in fact, declares all that takes place, okay? All that takes place and transpires in the world through the ages, not just today. You saw what happened in Maui, hmm. Hawaii? You saw what was, you see what's happening on the East Coast, the Eastern Seaboard? You see all the tornadoes touching down? You see the heat wave that's going across the world? This scripture tells us, it's God who knows all that has, not just that which we're going through now. We've got record after record after record of heat wave, and, and they say it's going to get even worse. God already knows all that, and he knew from the foundation of the world, from the beginning of time to the end, okay? That's because the Lord is omnipotent. He's divine, and so is his plan for you and I. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. If he knows all that, he knows exactly what we should be doing and when, when, when we should be doing it. Amen? Amen? He knows our thoughts better than we do. So in closing, keep in mind that whatever we do, it says, and I think it's in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, we do all to the glory of God. Amen? Mm -hmm. Whatever we do, especially if you know that you were not only put here for God's purpose, but we were put here for what? For his soul purpose. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's keep that in mind till next time. Praise God. Praise, Praise God. God. Now to those of you who don't know him, it's time to get to know Jesus. It's time to accept him into your heart. You need him. You need him more than you know. You need him. This needs to be the agenda of the day. This is what you need to write down. And put on your refrigerator or in your heart, I need to come to the Lord ASAP, as soon as possible. How do I do it? I'll tell you how. You ask him into your heart with sincerity. And you believe that he is God. And he will come into your heart. You don't need an appointment. You don't have to call. You don't have to uh, uh, text anybody. Just cry out to the Lord. And say, look. Just tell the Lord to repeat after me and repeat this prayer. And you'll be a child of God if you mean it in your heart sincerely. And say, Lord, I am a sinner. And I repent my sins to you right now. I'm sorry for the life I've lived. But I believe that you are God. You died for us. I understand that you were raised from the dead. Now, I don't understand all that. How it was done. But if that's you, then I need you in my life. Would you come into my life? And show me, and I'll follow you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer and you sincerely meant it, that's, that's it. You are now accepted. God's not going to make you do a song and a dance. He already knows where your heart is. Now, the next thing you have to do is get yourself a Bible. It doesn't stop there. You're, you're in. You're granted acceptance. But now there's work to be done, and God is going to do a work in you and through you, and how you get uh, uh, get to grow in the Lord is to read this Bible, the Holy Bible, and let the Holy Spirit lead and guide you. And you will receive growth, where you'll start growing, maturing in the Word. And you'll become stronger. 
He's going to take away the things that have been hampering you. Some of you have secret sins that nobody knows about but you and the Lord. Some of you have done things, all of us have done things that nobody knows about but us and the Lord. The Lord is going to pull that out of you. He's going to take it away from you. If you've been an adulterer, if you've been a, a womanizer, What's the opposite of that? A manizer? If you've been, whatever the case may be. If you've been lying, stealing. I remember stealing when I was little. No excuse. No excuse. But if you did things like that, God knows about it. You repent of it. He's going to take things away from you where you won't do it anymore. If you have sexual ambiguity, where you don't understand uh, you're a man and you like men or you're a woman and you like women. Give God a chance. He's going to take care of that for you. Mm -hmm. As you mature in Christ, as you get conformed to the likeness of Christ, he wants to, he's going to set you apart from what you used to be. You're no longer going to be that way. If you love alcohol, he, he's going to take the taste out of your mouth if you let him. He'll take it away from you. I guarantee you he will if you let him. He's going to restore you to what you should be in the likeness of Christ. It's going to be an all, it's going to be an all encompassing act and it may take the rest of your life. But if you stay with him, he'll do it. Amen. Won't he do it? The saints know he'll do it. Amen. Amen. So with that, we're going to uh, uh, pray a deliverance prayer. We're going to pray that the Lord takes some things out of our lives. And then we're going to adjourn for the day. And I'll let you all have the rest of your time. Praise God. Father, we thank you again for today. And we ask you, Lord, to remove these things from our lives. Would you take away uh, blasphemy, obscenity, profanity, coarse talking, critical spirit, spirits of jealousy, coveting, envy, murmuring, gossiping. We remove selfishness from us, greed, greed, gluttony, pride, rebellion, stubbornness, prejudice, racism, hatred, unforgiveness, unrepentant hearts, spiritual blindness. Would you take away fear, confusion, contentions, argumentativeness, uh, resentment, depression, and anxiety, revenge, superstition. Would you help transgender children and people come to accountability in you, Lord God? Remove procrastination, complacency, apathy, lying, stealing, fraud, mental abuse, sexual abuse, child, spousal, and elder abuse, domestic violence in all forms. Would you take away the thought of murder, the act of murder, abortion, suicide, self-mutilation, selfish ambition, addictive spirits, spirits of mental illness, infirmities, physical impairment, let nothing keep us from you, discouragement, mocking God or attempting to mock God, superficial faith, conceit, fence straddling, compromising Christianity, casual Christianity, satanic cults, uh, divination, witchcraft, voodoo, uh, all these things, Lord God, there are pastors and, 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 and people in leadership who are masons, Lord. They don't realize that they're making oaths to the devil. Help them to understand and get out of those things, Lord. Ouija boards, seances, psychics, fortune tellers, tarot cards, tea leaves, crystal balls, all kinds of black magic. Lord, remove that from us. Astrology, homosexuality, Bisexuality, adultery, fornication, incest, cross-dressing, pornography, immorality as a whole, gambling, doubt, division, hidden agendas, distractions, unbelief, cyberbullying, rejection, animal cruelty, and desecrating the land that you've given us. Lord, if there be anything in our hearts, it's not on this board that will keep us from you. We ask that you remove it from us in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, finally, would you bless... Uh, all those who heard this message today, all those on, on Facebook, all those who tuned in on uh, YouTube, those who might hear this next week, down the road, next year, I don't know, Lord. You, now that the product is out, you, your word will go where you want it to go. And lastly, Lord, our loyal members, the Zoom crew, faithful followers, Lord, who, who are here and have always been here, Lord, 
doing their best to follow you. Ask for a special blessing in their lives. Ask that you cover each and every one on the screen. Lord God, touch them in an in a intimate way. So they won't have to worry, be concerned, or be confused, Lord, that you are with them. Ask that you provide everything they need, health care, healing, mental acuity, uh, Lord God, sharpness, uh, finances, protect their families, Lord God, protect their home fronts, keep their homes safe. No weapons formed against them, Lord, shall prosper in the name of Jesus. Lord God, let them continue to have the boldness and the wherewithal and to walk with you, the zeal, Lord God, that they are a people that you've called to yourself, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, God's holy nation, Lord God, and know it in their hearts, Lord. Bless them as we continue to serve you. These things we pray and we give you all praise, all the glory, all the honor, Lord God. Bless us, keep us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, saints. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for accompanying us, meeting us here. Thank you for partaking of this meal. Until next time, praise God.